It's been about five years since my passion and interest for street photography really started. And some things we can only learn from time and experience. Well, in this video, I want to share with you five lessons I've learned that I certainly wish I knew sooner that have helped me with my street photography along the way. Some of these tips are not as typical as a five street photography tips video you may have seen before, but more ways of thinking and almost life lessons that have helped me with my street photography over the years. Lesson number one, people's opinions versus the work itself. People's perceptions of your photography isn't what gives it value. Depending on where that person is in their life, how they feel about something and what interests them at that time all determines their reaction to something. I've shown the same image to three different photographers and received three different reactions. I therefore shouldn't attach their response to how good the photo is, but instead we can listen to their feedback and opinion and take it on board if we think it aligns with the direction we want to take our photography. I've received one piece of advice from a photographer and completely disregarded it, heard the same piece of advice from a different photographer years later and reconsidered it. This is exaggerated by the fact that the internet exists, everyone has an opportunity to voice their thoughts, there are so many opinions flying around left, right and centre, including from people like myself who make YouTube videos and content online. I think it's about being aware that someone's opinion of something doesn't add or take away value from what you're producing. But if we can't rely on the judgment of others, how do we know if we're making anything worthwhile? For me personally, my biggest tell is when I look back at photos from years ago and notice the little differences in what catches my eye and how my awareness has improved. Street photography is one big game of learning to see. And if I'm seeing things now that I wasn't able to see years ago, I'd call that progression. If I could put this simply, the things that I notice and the things that I enjoy taking photos of happen way before anyone else has stained it with an opinion. Lesson number two is about mental health and being involved in the world. I'm convinced that being outside and involved in the world has to be better than quivering and hiding from it. And the most glaring example of this is the difference between Twitter and real life. If you just spend a couple of minutes scrolling on Twitter, it would appear that planet Earth and everyone on it are awful. There's loud political opinions from left to right, climate change is destroying everything and everyone and it's your fault, which quite frankly is just overwhelming and a little bit silly. But if you go outside and speak to everyday people working in the city, it is a totally different story. Everyday people don't walk around yelling their political opinion at people or ranting about Elon Musk. Everyday people are simply busy with their lives, walking from one place to another, holding a loved one's hands, catching up with someone in a coffee shop, or running through a park during sunset. Street photography has taught me that the real world is so much nicer when you start looking for it. Yes, bad things happen and bad people exist. I'm not naive to it. But the process of learning to notice the little moments and the smaller details goes a long way into being present and generally grateful that I'm here to witness some of these too good to be true moments. When we start looking for it, humans are fascinating, moments are fleeting, and I think we should enjoy it, not run away from it. And for that reason, street photography has done wonders for my mental health. Lesson number three, repetitions is the key difference between good and great. The pursuit of getting a great image is what keeps us coming back. And one of the nice things about street photography is that there isn't an expectation for you to achieve that instantly. The very best street photographers might only capture portfolio worthy images three, four, five times a year. So it's acceptable for us not to achieve anything straight away which means when you do get something great, it has even more value. I've been skateboarding for 12, 13 years, and especially when I was younger, I used to do it as much as physically possible. That taught me the lesson of repetition as much as street photography has. You might spend hundreds of hours learning to do one kickflip, and then when you finally land it, it feels like you've won the lottery. That sense of achievement is so fulfilling that you just want to land it again and again, get it dialed down, and then move on to learning a new trick. And if it was easy to do, everyone would do it. So the only way we can truly get great photos or land new tricks on a skateboard is to get outside and do it over and over and over again. Learning from your great photos will encourage you to keep at it. Learning from your failures will teach you how to improve next time. The more you get out there, the better you'll get. Lesson number four is books, books, books. Photo books have single-handedly had the biggest impact on my street photography. From the physical aspect of being outside and trying new techniques to just how I think and feel about photography, 
photo books have taught me loads. There has not been a better way for me to see great photos. It's as simple as that. You have collections of work, sometimes covering decades of amazing photographers' careers, dialed down into a 50, 100, 200, 300 page book. There just simply isn't a way of seeing that level of work in such a digestible format. For those who may have started street photography recently, you might have created the likes of an Instagram account and therefore consuming most of your photos on a small screen. I cannot express the difference between seeing your photos on a screen compared to physically in your hand. The work is so much more impressive in print. Why I also think photo books work so well is because there's a higher barrier to entry. You are so much more likely to come across great work when it's published on a shelf or listed in a top 10 photo book recommendations. These books most likely have been made with such care and effort that the work you find in them is very intentional and has stood the test of time. These books don't accidentally make themselves, and for that reason, photo books hold a certain level of quality that you might not find when you just randomly come across someone's Twitter profile. Number five is learning the difference between photos for our eyes and photos for our brain. I first heard this idea about a year ago, but I cannot for the life of me remember who said it or where I read it, but just know this isn't really my original thinking, but I definitely think it's worth sharing because it's helped me. What are you trying to achieve by taking the photo? Do you want to show someone and say, look how cool this looks? Or do you want to show someone and say, look how special that moment is? If the moment is a one in a million, it's funny, there's an array of emotions, we're reading the image, we're digesting all of its contents and coming to a conclusion about what the story is. I think if the image sparks a conversation about what's happening in the frame, that's a great starting point. It's affected the viewer in a certain type of way to question it and look deeper. That right there is a photo for our brain. If the photo is a look how cool this looks, then it's probably just front facing visuals. A striking bit of light, great color, geometry and shapes. That right there is visually pleasing and a photo for the eyes. In my opinion, photos for the brain are way harder to do. Moments are fleeting and they probably can never be recreated. But regardless of which type of photo is better, that is subjective. It does help knowing the difference between the two so you can take your photo in a certain direction or take your photography in a certain direction with intention. For example, if the light is amazing, I'm walking around some beautiful architecture, there are shadows and silhouettes around me, I'm more inclined to try and take a photo for the eyes. The opportunity has obviously presented itself for something visually pleasing. This can also be seen as more fine art street photography. However, if I'm walking down a busy Oxford street in London, I'm going to be looking for coincidences, fleeting moments and emotions from passers-by. I'm more inclined to document what I see and try and find something special hidden among the chaos. And if I do manage it, that image is way less likely to be visually pleasing but more of a raw documentation of what's happening around me. Just by simply understanding the difference between a brain photo and a photo for our eyes has helped me get into the right headspace for the scene in front of me. I just like to remember this theory as it gives me focus and allows me to lean into that style more depending on the situation. There's definitely a time and a place for each style of street photo. But if you've never given it a thought, maybe this could help. Are you taking a photo for the brain or taking a photo for the eyes? It could change how you approach street photography. Finally on this, simply being outside taking photos is a win. Whether you care about the styles or intentions or how your photos come out in general, it's supposed to be fun, especially as street photography is a hobby for most of us. Just simply being outside taking photos for the sake of taking photos, I think is enough. If you enjoyed this video, I have a weekly newsletter all about street photography. So head over to my website, link in the description to hear more from me every single week, sharing recommendations, things I've learned, things I've seen from the previous week, and just overall having a good street photography conversation. So if you're interested in that, join the Focal Point newsletter. Again, a link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please hit subscribe if you got any value from this, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace.